May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose baptism we celebrate today and remember our own. And may peace and mercy from him be with you all. Amen. I did want to add that we are going to be taking down the greens and all the decorations after the second service and then following our work have a potluck, chili potluck, um, and I look forward to that. Um, so please, um, if you want to come back for a good chili and uh, lend a hand, thank you very much. So here we are, baptism of our Lord Jesus, after living in obscurity for nearly 35 years, Jesus comes down from Galilee, which is in northern Israel. He lived in Nazareth, which is close to the lake, Galilee or Lake Nazareth, where his parents lived and then where Jesus as an adult man lived. He comes down to the Jordan, which is in towards southern Israel and the flows into um, the Jordan, flows down towards Judea, towards Jerusalem, and there John the Baptist, his cousin, is preaching and he's baptizing many. And the Gospels, and there are wonderful stories about Jesus' baptism in Matthew or in Luke or in Mark, all tell of this significant event in Jesus' life done by his cousin. And I found two beautiful pictures that I want to share with you. The first one, the first one is one from 1509. This is in a French cathedral and it is a stained glass window of Jesus' baptism in the Jordan. What's funny, almost hilarious, at the beginning of the story is that as Jesus comes to John, that John the Baptist tries to talk Jesus out of what Jesus is trying him to get to do. And believe me, it never works. John finally gives in and baptizes Jesus. And there's another picture, and we'll leave this one throughout the service. This is, of course, from He Qi, the Chinese American artist who has this wonderful, wonderful um, imagination um, of Christian art and the stories of Scripture that he brings to color. Jesus, then as he rises out of the water, the heavens open, the spirit in form of a dove descends on Jesus and God speaks of God's love for his beloved son. I'm aware that baptism is an event that happened to many of us before we were even capable of remembering that event. Now Jesus is an adult person when he is baptized and of course he vividly remembers it. When he is being baptized, rising out of the waters of the Jordan, the Spirit of God descended upon descended upon him like a dove and a voice from heaven says this is my son the beloved with whom I am well pleased this is so meaningful that Matthew Mark and Luke all three have these same words beloved what a beautiful word to be beloved is to be adored to be beloved is to be cherished. To be beloved is to be treasured. That is the promise in our baptism. And it is first and foremost an act of God. God claiming us as God's very own. A beloved child. God declaring to us simply because we belong to God that God is pleased with us 
Now that is a story to tell that you, that I am beloved by God and that God is pleased with you and me. That is a story to tell. But that is not always the story that we tell ourselves. Many of us have another story that runs in our heads from time to time. Sometimes we call this storyteller our inner critic, our shadow. The one who reminds us perhaps just what a failure we are or how people may only be pretending to like us. We live in a culture that promises acceptance based so much on, say, if we are skinny enough, strong enough, successful enough, rich enough, popular enough, beautiful enough, young enough, and on and on I could go in order to be beloved. We know this from our own life experience. The painful experience that no matter what we do or no matter how hard we try, we just are not measuring up in the eyes of others. Which means that the message of baptism that God has declared that you and I not will be or should be or could be, but are enough are enough that God accepts you and me just as we are may just be what we need to hear. Because our baptism and our thanksgiving for baptism provides us with a name, beloved, and with that name and identity, child of God, one to whom God is unfailingly committed that's why baptism matters, because it tells you and me who we are by reminding us whose we are, God's beloved children. Now, for some reason, there's something difficult for us about the idea and the gift of being loved completely apart from what you and I do or don't do. I'm not completely sure why that is so, but I realize it is so. Maybe because it only highlights how much being loved apart from what we do or don't do is so rarely something that we experience or encounter in our culture, at our workplaces, in relationships where we are so often measured, graded, evaluated, compared, based on performance, looks, appearance, value, and all the rest. I believe it is really difficult for us to truly believe that we are completely loved in the eyes of God outside of our worthiness, outside of our doings, outside of our performance. You get what you deserve is what we hear and the standard by which we operate, function, and often interact with each other in relationships at the workplace. Which is why on one hand this story of Jesus' baptism and God's unqualified, abundant love toward His Son is a hard one for us to listen to. Because here we are, one week into the new year, the time when we are resolving to improve ourselves in the new year, resolving and perhaps already failing to be more awesome, more beautiful, more disciplined, which is, of course, to say, more worthy of love. It is this time of year when we are recovering from not being loved well, trying to forget all the ways we too have not loved others, and are busily trying to do things to make ourselves more worthy of love 
that we hear this text from Matthew where Jesus is baptized in the Jordan and this story is pure gospel love. Which is also why we need to hear this story, especially these words of affirmation, of love and support that God speaks to His beloved Son, and which God speaks by extension to you and me as His beloved children. Because the story of baptism is not only a story that you and I belong to God and are beloved by God, it is also a story that we belong to each other as a community, that we are part of a larger story of God's presence in the world which God is still writing through you and me. Now here's the one thing, here's the one thing I love the most about the baptism of our Lord, reading. If you read carefully all three stories in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it is not that God says, look, here's my son, the beloved with whom I am well pleased because look you spend so much time with me in prayer in the morning or reading the Torah and boy can he ever heal a leper none of that did you notice that as Jesus stands in the river Jordan dripping wet and the dove descends on him, and the words are spoken, My beloved with whom I am well pleased. Did you notice that really Jesus hasn't done anything yet? He hasn't done anything yet. He hasn't proved himself yet. He hasn't shown his worthiness yet. He hasn't done anything to deserve what he receives as pure gift. None of this worthiness stuff. None of this worthiness stuff. Jesus hasn't done anything yet and he is called beloved. The one in whom God is well pleased. People of Community of Joy Lutheran Church, that is God for you. And I mean that literally. God for you. And you know what that spells? Jesus' middle name. Emmanuel. Yes, Emmanuel. Thanks be to God. Always remember our baptism. You are the beloved. And you don't need to prove it. You are. Thanks be to God. Amen.